playing with fire, CRUD your data in real time. In the last section, we learned about the Firebase dashboard and got a good start on our live links project by creating the necessary JavaScript and HTML files and including Firebase as a dependency. Now we can get started on adding actual functionality to the app. In this section, we will learn how to add and retrieve data from Firebase using the API, how to update and delete data, demonstrate everything in the Chrome debugger console, and finally add the ability for our users to submit links to our live links application. In this video, Adding and Retrieving Data, we dive a bit deeper into all the ways you can add and retrieve data from Firebase by trying out some code in the Chrome Debugger console. We'll use the push method to add items in a list fashion, learn how to retrieve single values from Firebase, and finally, we'll really see where Firebase shines by subscribing to the child added, child changed, and child removed events, and see data roll in from Firebase in a controlled manner. Open the index.html file with Chrome and open the Debugger Tools console. In another Chrome window, open the data browser in the Firebase dashboard. We'll be using the push method to add data because our reference is a list object. Get a Firebase reference by instantiating a Firebase object with the link's location, create a sample link object, and assign it to a variable. Using the Firebase reference, call the push method and pass it the sample link object we created above. In the data browser, you'll notice that it was added in real time just as we had expected. Had we used set, it would have cleared out all the objects listed under the link's location, but because we used push, Firebase was smart enough to automatically create a unique idea or name under which the link object we sent was set. Go ahead and push a few more links into the links list and see them appear in real time in the data browser, each with their own unique ID. Now that we've sent data to Firebase, let's retrieve it using the on method. On takes as its first parameter one of five events. The first event is the basic value event, which gets fired once initially to provide the current value and each time thereafter if any value within that object changes elsewhere. Note that this goes for any nested object's values as well, so this should be used with caution. Try setting up a listener for the value event on our list reference from above and pump the output into the console logger. Notice that we received a snapshot of the entire links list object. A more efficient way of tracking changes is to listen to the child added event, which is fired only when a new key is added to a reference object and returns only the object added. Try it out using the console logger to output our results and notice that we are now receiving one object per link in the list rather than the entire list object itself. To track changes to children of a particular location, we listen to the child changed event Invoke the on method on our reference object and pass the child changed event and a callback that outputs the results to the console logger. In the data browser, modify one of the links and observe that the console logger outputs the updated version of that link in real time. What if you wanted to know when a child was removed? You guessed it. We listened to the child removed event. Let's set up another listener and remove a link from the list. You will notice that we will still receive a snapshot of the object we removed even though it has been deleted. This data is useful for actually removing the object from the DOM or informing the user which item has been removed. We now have a good understanding about how to retrieve data from and add data to a Firebase database and are comfortable working with the Firebase API. In the next video, Updating and Deleting Data, we get to play around with Firebase's Update and Delete API endpoints.